Mm -hmm. Okay, you found it? Perfect. Yep. All right, so welcome everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday, happy home day. So today uh, we are doing Tanzania, Tanzania, however you, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, the link to sign in is right here. Very easy to sign in guys. Um, take your time. If you haven't registered, do we have any brand new agents here today joining us for the first time? If so, welcome. Congratulations, thank you for joining us. Uh, we do these on Wednesdays and um, Fridays and Saturdays, okay? Um, my calendar is right here. It's uh, usually posted in all the chats. Uh, you can plan in advance, guys. So uh, Friday, we're doing Qatar, okay? That's another TBO, so you should be good once you register today. Uh, Saturday, we're doing Charisma um, uh, uh, Hotel Complex um, uh, Resorts, okay? We're going to be doing Morocco, the Vatican, Bindham Hotels, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Part 2 of the Vatican, and Ibera Star. Ibera Star, Ibera Star, okay? We finished Canada. Whoop, whoop. We did that Sunday. Uh, I think we're on for three or four hours. That one was a long one. And that was part five. So we never know how long these are going to be until we get in and start doing them. Okay. So sometimes we get in and they're like done in 20 minutes. Sometimes we are on for 10 days doing them. So um, the fun part about doing it, guys, and I want to explain to you guys, um, we do these to first learn and help our clients. We want to know about these different destinations, these different programs. All right, uh, Christina, what you're going to do is click this link. You're going to click sign in, okay, or register. Uh, very easy. It may ask for, you know, the agency that will always be Archer Travel. And then it'll also ask um, for probably our IATA number, um, which I'll put here in the chat box. The hell is that? And what you want to make sure to do is memorize that. That's our driver's license for booking travel. Whenever you're talking with the vendor or doing a booking or registering, you want to be affiliated with Archer Travel, okay? Um, because again, that's who we work through. We've been in the business for they've been in the business for 70 years, guys. So yes, you definitely want to be affiliated with them, right? You want all these perks and amazing benefits that we get as agents, right? So always, always put, you know, that you're affiliated with Archer Travel. Evolution is the marketing site. So I just want to kind of make sure you guys understand that. Um, so right here is my YouTube channel. I do record these, okay? So what I try to tell you guys is get in and make sure that you... Um, uh, you'll finish it. If you have to jump off, make sure you go back in and finish it because you never know. Some people have one luggage. Some people have one trips, uh, goodie bags. Um, and then again, after you finish it, you also get invited to, um, you know, lunch and learn, promotional material um, and familiarization trips. Okay. So this right here is my YouTube channel. So like I said, if for any reason you have to jump out um, and need to come back and finish it, I will be having it posted here, okay? All right, um, let me go over here to one more thing before we get started. Again, if you're just getting registered, don't worry, we will wait for you. Um, a lot of times people will register, listen and watch the videos and then we all take the test together. So again, I wanna make sure you guys understand that you know, we will not leave you behind. We want to make sure everybody passes. A lot of times you'll get a certificate and then you get to post that on social media. Hey guys, I'm now a specialist with, uh, you know, Fiji or a specialist with uh, Tanz Tanzania, you know. So um, again, great way to market yourself. Okay, guys. So uh, let me go into, I think it's featured. And uh, I'm going to also show you another place that all the trainings that we've done are in here. So if you are new and you want to catch up on some of the ones that we've done in the past, 
um, the, the spreadsheet is right here for you. So you can go in and um, you'll catch up. You want to do Disney, we have all the answers. You want to do Princess Cruise Line, get that free cruise, we have all the answers. All right. Uh, your username, I think, will be whatever you put. So whether it's your, you know, your name, your email, um, because it should give you the option to put a username. Okay, your email. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And I registered a long time ago. I don't remember. All right. So as I said, here's a bunch of these programs that you guys can go in and you guys see my screen okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, these yes. are destinations you can, um, or programs that you can go in and register. And again, you guys can do these trainings on your own or do them with us. But these are all the ones that we've done already. So if you guys, like I said, um, Marriott, you definitely want to do Marriott, Disney, um, uh, Jamaica, Jamaica, One Love. They give away fam trips all the time. Okay. All right. So just wanted to kind of show you those things. Now, if you're new, a lot of people will follow along on their phone and take the test online with us. Others will do a split screen. So that way, um, you know, they can watch and then do the test together. Okay. All right, so we're back here to uh, the TBO Academy. All right, make sure your name's up here, your profile, your itinerary, et cetera. There's a collection of all kinds of courses that are available. And again, we, we do new ones each month, okay? And again, you guys can get in and do any of these you want on your own or give us an idea of what you wanna see next month and we'll do them together, okay? So destinations. Um, so is somebody saying somebody needs something? Um, having a problem finding it. Okay, did you get in? If you got yes, in, in, then you should be able to type in, I think, Tanzania, and it should, yeah, right here, Tanzania. I can't even see, let me. <laughs> so if you go into search, there's a search bar there. And they go into the search bar and then you'll come up here and then it'll pull up Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Got it? All right. Um, so I want to make sure everybody's here. Everybody knows where we're at. Everybody's logged in. Again, if you're just logging in, we have a lot of amazing agents on here that will help you. So just ask the question, just like Christina just did. Maria and Danny all answered. So again, we're here to help each other. I'm, I'm not in yet. Just like you guys, you got in? No. Not yet, okay. Uh, are you having trouble signing in or finding the login or what? Um, first of all, what is, is that, is that noise my computer or do you hear that beeping? I just heard it a minute when you started talking but I don't hear it now. Yeah, it keeps going. But I didn't know if it was my computer or you guys heard that. You too. may sometimes you may have if you have two going at the same time, it may, you know, hear pick up noise or something. But no, I don't hear any beeping. I don't know if anybody else does. I hear it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, well, I'm trying to minimize and do two screens, but now I don't know which I'll I'll just, I'll figure it out. I'll let you keep going. <laughs> okay, yeah, just, and again, ask in the chat. That's what we're here for. So, you know, don't, don't, um, don't give up. A lot of people get, you know, frustrated and then they get out. Um, don't, because again, we're not to the test yet. Um, if someone who is unmuted and their phone is vibrated. Okay. All right. So I'll try to keep the, the lines muted. If you need to talk, just unmute yourself. All right. So this is the screen um, that you should be on TBO Academy about this course. So a quick overview, uh, Tanzania um, dicto Dictamos. Okay, again, I apologize first off, um, I'm not the best with pronunciation. So please forgive me if uh, I mispronounce and correct me. Um, Generally one of a kind, thanks to the union in its intrinsical, intrinsically synchronous <laughs> wilderness with the quirkiness of a refined cultural past. 
All right, Tanz Tanzania ecology is, or Tanzania um, ecology is dominated by some of the world's most unusual creatures. Tanzania is overflowing with species, whether zebras and giraffes, deers, buffalo herd, or feline lions and tigers. Uh, Serengeti and Ngorongoro Crater are home to the world's most remarkable wild beast migration and in enormous areas. These locations are also perfect for birding as the country is home to over 1,400 different species of birds. These birding locations are among Tanzanians, uh, Tanzania's, sorry, which way do you guys pr pronounce it? Anybody prefer or know the correct Tanzania? Tanz Tanz Tanzania is what I say. Tanzania. I say Tanzania. Okay. <laughs> Tanzania. All right, thank you. Tanzania. Most popular tourism destinations. Okay. Now, frequently asked questions. When is a good time to visit? All right, so these again, take note. Some of these may be test questions. The greatest season to visit Tanzania is from June to October when you can see the country's wildlife as well as a huge migration of numerous species. What are the finest items to buy in Tanzania? Tanzania, sorry. Some of the nicest items to buy include Tanzanite, uh, woven baskets, jewelry, wood sculptures, vivid textiles, tribal jewelry, and batik, whatever that is. What are some of the great greatest foods to eat in Tanzania? Some of the greatest foods to eat are ugali, samaki, nidzi, kanga, waliwa nazi, and date nut bread. Yeah, I got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So start this course. It's for intermediate. It says it lasts about 30 to 40 minutes. It's English. You must pass the quiz to complete the course. And we're going to go ahead and start the course. Okay. Excellent reviews. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start the course. Now what happens is you'll probably click this and it's going to say you have to register again. So let's see. Just want to give you a heads up. It's like, hey. All right. Start the court. There we go. All right. Now, really quick, I just want to share with you, I learned this on the last training that we did. Right here, add to itinerary. Guys, you can click here to add all slides, and that will save right up here under my name, under my account, and my itinerary. Now, you don't have to take screenshots and stuff. It'll save all these um, things that we're going over for you to review later okay so great great opportunity for you um so you don't have to you know try to you know in case you miss something or whatever it'll be there for you all right so as i said i'll start reading and then when we get to the test i'll make sure everybody is ready to take the test so tanzania's um okay i think we read this already 1400 locations okay tourism Crater. Okay. So in 2013, uh, Tanzania. Thank you. Tanzania. Thank you. <laughs> Tanza, za, za, za. Okay. In 2013, travel and tourism in Tanz, Tanzania accounted for 17.5% of the country's gross domestic product, 1,189,300 um, jobs, um, and employed 11. 0.0% of the country's workforce, um, the industry is quickly expanding with revenues rising from U.S. $1.74 billion in 2004 to now U.S. $4.48 billion in 2013. Ta um, Tanzania received 1,284,279 tourists in 2016, up to 590,000 in 2005. With 1.5 million visitor arrivals in 2019, Tanzania's tourism sector produced USD 2.6 billion in income. Travel receipts fell to US dollar uh, 1.06 billion in 2020 as a result of COVID-19. 
the number of foreign tourist arrivals fell to 616,491. Tan Tanzania's Ministry of Tourism and Natural Resources were allocated uh, TZ's 90 billion for the fiscal year, 2021-2022, in October of 2021, as part of an IMF loan for emergency financial assistance. All right, so much of, um, so this is the history. And just so you guys know, a lot of times, um, you know, we kind of have to take a little history test, but it's kind of good because it helps you with the knowledge to be able to talk to your clients. So much of the known history of um, Tanzania um, before the 19th century involves a coastal area. Although the interior has several critical prehistoric sites in the Ngorongoro, crater in Tanzania's northeastern region. The Olde Bay Gorge is the most notable. Mary Leakey found the near-perfect skull of the eastern man, Zinjanthropus boise, currently regarded as Paranthropus boise, a kind of astrolopith. Again, I apologize for the pronunciation. Who inhabited the, inhabited the area between 2.3 and 1.2 million years ago? Um, after years of digs in the canyon with her husband Louis Leakey, according to data from other archaeological sites and historical documents, several large waves of immigration into the Tanz Tanzanian coast have been documented across millennia. Traders from Greece, Rome, um, Phoenicia, Arabia, Persia, and India were likely among the first to arrive, potentially as early as the fifth century BCE and lasting throughout the following millennium. The formation of several Asian and Arab, um, Arab trade communities along the coast and in the interior of Tanzania. The or, or origin of Tanzania is from trading links from Arabia and East African coast. Coastal commerce centers mainly were under um, Arab um, control and the ties between Arabs and the, their African neighbors appeared to be pleasant. Um, the, the Arabs uh, position was steadily weakened after the advent of the Portuguese in the late 15th century. Although the Portuguese made little attempts to penetrate the interior early in the 18th century, oops, hold on, let me see real quick. Early in the 18th century, um, I always miss my mess. I always do that. They were driven north um, of the Ruvuma River by an um, alliance between the coastal um, Arabs and the king of Muscat at the Arabian Peninsula. However, until French involvement in the slave trade from Tanzania coastal port of Kilwal restarted the trade in 1776, this relationship remained exceedingly shaky. The French's interest aroused the Sultan of Muscat's interest in the East African coast's economic potential and a new um, Amani governor was established at Kilwa. Most slaves came from the Kilwa hinterland and any contract between the beach and the interior was primarily due to African caravans from the interior until the 19th century. Um, Arab traders continued to venture further into the interior in their ongoing hunt for slaves in the history of Tanz Tanzania, notably in the southeast towards Lake Nyasa. Further north in 1825, two Indian traders followed tribal trades routes to reach the Nyamewezi area. Ivory appears to have attracted as much attention as slaves along the path. After relocating his capital from Muscat to Zanzibar, Saad Ibn Sol encouraged the Arabs to exploit those commercial opportunities. And in the early 1840s, um, Arabs pressed towards, um, forward from the Nyamwezi area to Lake Tanzania. On Lake Tanzania, Tabora or Kazi is it was formerly known, and Ujiji became important commercial centers and several Arabs settled here. 
They did not acquire these lands, although they occasionally expelled rival chieftains. Church Missionary Society missionaries Johann Ludwig Kampf and Johannes Rebman, who visited Kilimanjaro in the late 1840s, were the first Europeans to demonstrate interest in Tanzania in the 19th century. Jacob Earhart, a fellow missionary, created the renowned slug map showing a large shapeless interior lake based on Arab knowledge that piqued the curiosity of British explorers Richard Burton and John Henning Speak. In 1857-58, they walked from Bangaboya to Lake Tanzania, where Speak visited Lake Victoria. In 1860, Speak embarked on his second mission with J.A. Grant to prove Grant's hypothesis that the Nile River rose in Lake Victoria. The operations of David Livingston, who went out on his final voyage towards Lake Nyasa in 1866, continued these essentially geographic discoveries. Livingston's goal was to expose the evils of the slave trade while also destroying the slave trade as its source by allowing lawful trade within, with the interior. Livingston's voyage inspired the expeditions of H.M. Stanley and V.L. Cameron. After 1860, several missionary organizations were interested in East Africa. Hello? Uh-huh. Hello. Due to Livingston's work and example. All right. Next. So this is the territory that we're working with here, okay? From 1920 until 1924, Sir Horace Byatt, the administrator of the captured uh, territory and the first British governor and commander in chief of Tan Tanzania territory, as it was then known, mandated a recuperation period before initiating fresh development plans. African land rights were secured thanks to the land ordinance of 1923. Stick with me, guys. It will get more exciting, okay? <laughs> Mandated a recuperation period before initiating fresh development plans. African land rights were secured thanks to the land ordinance of 1923. Sir Donald Cameron, who served as governor from 1925 to 1931, gave the nation a fresh lease on life. With the native authority. Hello. Ordinance. Hello. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Justin, one, two, three. <laughs> did you need? Did you need something? Did you need something? Okay. All right. I'll keep reading. Sorry, guys. All right. Um, ordinance of Native Courts Ordinance. He restructured the system of Native administration in 1929. His goal was to establish a local government based on traditional authority, which he accomplished with doctrinaire zeal and success. He advocated for establishing a legislative um, council in 1926 with a good proportion of non-official members, both European and Asian, to quell European criticism of his prede predecessor. Cameron overcame Kenyan resistance in his drive to expand the country's economy by obtaining British government consent to extend the central railway line from Tabora to Monza, 1928. His views on European um, settlers was shaped by their prospective um, economic benefit. As a result, he was taken aback by the British government's refusal to settle in Tanzania. Many of the Cameron's growth plans were thwarted due to the Great Depression after 1929. Constant suspicions of the 1930s that Tanzania might be returned to Germany in response to Adolf Hitler's then Chancellor of Germany demands on overseas colonies. At the onset of World War II, Tanzania's principal goal was to become as self-sufficient as feasible in important imported products. The continued demand, um, I had to take care of the, no, you didn't miss a test yet, you're good. The continued demand for primary products bolstered uh, the country's financial condition. Inevitably, the reduction that has begun in 1930s grew much more severe and the value of money fell in lockstep with the price of poor goods. 
Um, you have um, a Tanga Tanganyika's principal goal after the war was to ensure that its economic recovery and development plan was carried out. The growth plan centerpiece was a proposal to dedicate 3 million acres, 1.2 million hectares of land to peanut farming. The grand, um, groundnut scheme. The idea was uh, to be funded by the British government was estimated to cost 25 million um, euros, is that euros, with an um, additional 4.5 million needed to build a railway in Southern Tanzania. The British government's decision to place ta um, Tanzania under UN trusteeship. And I, I'm in a meeting, I'll call you back. Bye. Um, trusteeship was the most significant immediate post-war constitutional reform in 1947. Under the provisions of the trusteeship agreement, Britain was tasked with development, de developing the territory's political life, which only began to take shape in the 1950s. Julius Nair, 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 Nair was elected president of the Tanzania African Association in 1953 founded in Dar es Salaam in 1929 and was mostly made up of African public workers. Naira Air and his uh, um, allies converted the TAA from social to political organization in early 1954. Later that year, the TAA became the Tanzania African National Union, TANU, um, where with the declared goals of self government and independence. In December 1945, the first two African members of the Legislative Council were nominated. Then this number was raised to four with three non-official Asian members and four Europeans. Officially, a majority was maintained. In 1955, the three, three factions were granted equal participation on the unofficial side of the council with 10 nominated members each, and it appeared for a time that this basis would be maintained. However, the first elections to the unofficial side of the council in 1958 and 59 allowed TANU to demonstrate its power since only TANU backed candidates were elected among the European and Asian candidates. All right. Independence. Okay. So again, guys, if you're just joining us, you can click up here to add itinerary. This will add all the information that we're going over under your uh, profile up here. And right now we're just going over like the history and then we'll talk about places to stay, things to do, places to eat, etc. So after the elections in 1960, a constitutional committee, um, happy birthday, dad. Uh, unanimously proposed that a substantial majority of the members of both sides of the council be Africans and that be um, and that elected members from the foundation of the administration. Tanu and its allies won a landslide victory in 1960. Legislative council elections and Nyerere um, became Tanganyika's first prime minister when the countries gained independence on December 9th, 1961. However, he resigned from his job the following month to write and synthesize his thoughts on governance and African unification. Rashadi Kawawa took his place. Narara's um, study titled Ujama, The Basis for African Socialism, eventually provided the conceptual foundation for the Arusha Declaration of 1967. Tanzania enact, enacted a republic um, constitution on December 9, 1962, and Nairera became the country's executive president. The following month, he stated that Tanu has chose, had chosen to make Tanganyika, a one party state for the sake of the national unity and the economic prosperity. In 1964, Nyerere's government was tested. An army mutiny was only put down in January when the president reluctantly solicited the help of British Marines. Tanu was the only legal party. However, in parliament elections, 
voters in each constitu constitu constituency, sorry, were frequently given the option of voting for more than one TANU candidate. This structure was more than just lip respect to the notion of democracy and democracy was proved in 1965 and subsequent elections when despite Narara's uh, re-election as the sole presidential candidate, a significant number of lawmakers, including cabinet ministry, lost their seats. All right, now some exciting stuff. The climate, how about the climate in Tanzania? Tis, tis, tis Tanzania, sorry. Pleasant all year round. However, there are considerable geographical differences. During the rainy season in Tanzania, the tropical coast is hot and humid with heavy and consistent rainfall. The middle plateau is dry and colder. The strongest rainfall in Tanzania, known as Masika, normally fall from mid-March to May, okay, remember these, and a shorter period of rain, rainfall known as Vuli usually falls from November to mid-January. From May until October, um, the dry season with colder temperature lasts, okay? The weather in Tanzania is enjoyable throughout the year. The daily average temperature in Tanzania ranges from uh, I'll put 71 to 72 um, Fahrenheit, January and April um, to 18 to 19 Celsius or 64 to 65 Fahrenheit in June and July. Between November and March, though, it may grow hot throughout the day. Okay, so you guys got those the times of when to send people or, or when you want to enjoy the weather? All right, best months to visit. When the temperature in Tanzania is milder, most people prefer to travel during this season. Seeing animals is accessible at this time of year. It's a great time to go on a wildlife safari or visit a game park. Traveling is made simpler because the rain hasn't begun yet. From June to September, the hotels are overcrowded and overpriced. So you don't wanna send them that then, right? Animals congregate near water sources, make it simple to identify them. So maybe you do if they wanna see the animals. October to February, the weather in Tanzania, hot. From October to February, somewhat damp and warm. Short showers begin to occur in late October. And then March to May, heavy rains make secondary roads muddy, some locations impassable in March and May, wet. Scenery is lush and green. Some hotels even have closed their doors while others are offering discounts, okay? So during the rainy season, probably shouldn't send your customers there. All right, get ready to take the quiz, guys. First quiz, um, Tanzania's population was 44 million, almost 45 million at the time in 12, 2012. Population in Tanzania under the age of 15 accounted for 44% of the total. Wow, lots of kids, guys. Um, Tanzania's population distribution is unequal. Majority of the population in Tanzania lives at the northern border or along the eastern coast, but the wet rest of the country is sparsely inhabited. The Katavi um, region, density of 12 per square kilometers, Whereas the Dar es Salaam region has a thickness of 3,133 per square kilometer. And then Dar es Salaam, the central city and commercial center of Ta Tanzania, has 4 million, 4.5 million people. Approximately 70% of the population of Tanzania lives um, in rural areas. However, this number has dropped since 1967. Dodoma population, 411,000. Tanzania's capital, home to the National Assembly. It is the country's central region. All right, you guys ready to take the test? Everybody registered? Let me know. And again, we'll wait, make sure everybody passes. Oops, let's take the test. Hold on. Ready. Ready, ready. All right, let's go. Why is it taking me back? 
Yeah, it did that to me also. It goes back and forth. And even if you go up by the pictures and press that arrow, it gets it kind of crazy. Down. There it goes. All right. And I want to let you guys know some of the questions may be out of order. So, um, Teresa, why well, won't I let you sign in? Uh, we'll wait for you again. We'll put the answers. Um, what's it telling you? you just, I, haven't you been on a one with us before? Because we've done these before. Um, I tried with my Facebook and then I tried with my Google and then it let me in on my yeah, Google. Yeah, I had to try those below. Yeah. It's, it's not letting me log in either. This is Christina. Yeah, I don't know. Try the Google email. Yeah, yeah try, try, try one or the other. Just go back out and try the other. Yeah, that's what I did and it didn't work. So I don't know. I'm just going to write down the answers and go back and do it, I guess. All right. Well, again, we'll wait for you. I mean, if you want to keep trying, because again, um, you know, I've tried, I think, all three and it, it went in. So, um, but yeah, keep trying and then uh, we'll put the answers in the chat. All right, so um, Dar as Salam, located in which part of Tanzania? And again, guys, if you this isn't your first question, it'll probably be down here. So don't worry, we all will help each other. Was it the central? That's, That's what, I, what I remember. All right, which city was the capital of Tanzania before Zanzibar? Uh, excuse me, that last answer was which one? Central City. Thank you. You're welcome. So which city was the capital of Tanzania? Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. Thank you. All right. What time of the year is uh, Tanzania overcrowded and overpriced? Remember, we wanted to say don't send them there, but the animals are good. Was June to September. September. June to September. Okay, thank you. Traders from which of the following countries were first to arrive in Tanzania? All of the above. All of the above. Yeah, I think it's all of the above. Okay. And what year did Tanzania gain independence? 1962. Was it six? I thought it was 61. Was it 62? Oh, December. I have 62. The, the correct answer. Yes, it was uh, December 9th, 1962. Okay. So, okay, for all of those that got 61 is a choice, this is the correct answer. It I already is. did that. That's how I know. So 61 okay. is it? It's 61? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have Central City, Dar es Salaam, June to September, all of the above, and 1961. Everybody agree? Let's go. Oh, I got one wrong. Okay. Yep, we got one wrong. Which one? I don't know. I wonder if we can go back. Anybody know which one we got wrong? Okay. Okay. I'm going to try commercial center and see if that I'll take it. I just oh, say retake wrong. test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just missed it. Okay, let me go back. Hold on, let me click over. <laughs> hey, I, you're I have to take it again. So let's right. try it again. Let's try it again really quick. So we can get five. Oh, no, five. I said it. I can't take it again. Oh, no. Oh, you yeah, have to go through. It says retake test. Yeah, you have to read go through and pretend you're oh, rereading it. Part. All right, so the best time overcrowded was June through September. Take the quiz. All oh, right, oh, quiz has been taken, probably because I passed it on the first one, so. Oh, shoot. No. We'll, we'll pass it without knowing then. Yeah, as, as long as you pass, you you're good. All right. Well, this is kind of okay. So what was now, the first? Um, what was the first one? Um, in which city did Tanzania gain independence? Uh, cent. It was a date. Central, or nineteen sixty one. 
1961 yeah. and the capital was uh, Dar es Salaam. Right. And then the next one was um, overcrowded and price overpriced June to June September. To September. Yep. Yeah. And oh, then the yeah. next one was uh, commercial yeah. commercial city commercial center. And then the following countries were first to arrive in Tasmania. Traders, traders from which of the following countries were first to arrive in Tanzania? All of the above. Eh, eh. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, so I have a question because she's saying commercial center and I thought it was central city. Um, oh yeah, yeah. so central mine city. was wrong. I just yeah. did it and it said it's I got three I got three city. out of five wrong. It's central city. Okay, I'm submitting. I got four okay. out of five. Let's see. So yeah, I got three out of five. So now, um, okay, central city, um, Dar es Salaam, located in the in which part of Tanzania? That was commercial city, right? Central. Central. Central Commercial city? city, I got wrong. Yeah. Okay. Central, Central City. And then the other one, which city was the capital? That's the Salam. Okay. I, I thought that's what I had clicked on there. Okay. Let me try. I'm going to try it again and see what happens. I missed one okay. of them, though. So I don't know which one I missed. Are we sure to sit the Central, I mean, the capital is right? Because when it showed it, it showed three black, which was three that was right. And then the other two were red. And that was mm -hmm. the capital of Tanzania and the year. So it was saying yeah, that, basically, that I guess- could be wrong because I didn't, I didn't do it. So yeah, I, two I, mean, of I those, got it those, wrong. Those are the two that I got wrong too. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, that capital is right either. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I just well, I thought it, it was a capital in got... the history of the country, not the current capital. Mm. Okay, well, okay, I have I a question. Uh -huh. Well, it's not a question, actually. I went through the test. It said four out of five. I could continue, and it took me all the way back to the things we were reading. Oh. Does that mean I have to take it again? No, probably I'm, not. If they said no. you passed. So this, yeah, it says Let's go forward, and they'll put you eventually in the right one. Yeah, it says four out of five. Yeah, you still pass then. Okay, yeah. yeah. Pass. Quiz has so been it'll taken. Skip the quiz. So is there going to be a certificate? Yeah, but afterwards we're not done. That's just one of the first tests. So you guys okay. ready to move on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So as you see, we still have things I'm to do not. places. <laughs> uh oh. Somebody's stuck or what? I'm, I've been, yeah, I'm stuck. Okay, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm getting them all wrong. <laughs> okay, again, uh, go through and we'll tell you the answers. Uh, traders uh, from which of the following countries were? All of the I, above. I kind of figured that. And it was uh, October to February? No, um, February, uh, June no, to September. No, it was June, June to September. June to September. Well, I can't go to the next tier. So the uh, it was uh, June to September. Correct. All right. And this was outer city. What Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam is located in which part of Tanzania? The rural part. That's what I had before. Central. Yeah, central. And sixty one. And Dar Salaam. Correct. Yeah. You probably missed one. No, it's uh, D O D O M A. That's that. that it's not. It's not Dar Salaam. It's Dar. Oh. Dar That's the one we yeah. missed. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But as long as you got four out of five, you passed. I didn't see. Because I tried them plenty of times. <laughs> okay, so did you pass? You're good now? Yes, I did. All right. So now we're on places to see, okay? 
All right, so more information, better, you know, exciting information. So um, Tanzania is noted for its vibrant wildlife, abundant aquatic life, ranging from immense wilderness to lush green islands, from the big five game to beautiful corals. Tropical resort of Zanzibar is home to various islands, magnificent landmarks, and some of Tanzania's most exhilarating adventure sports and enticing destinations to explore. You have Mem Memba Island, um, part of the Zanzibar Archipelago, is only 90 minute drive from Stone Town. This private island is situated in a paradise, one of the best places to visit in Tanzania for luxurious escapes surrounded by enormous spice farms, turquoise seas, Visit this location for a beautiful private island experience where you can stay in luxury accommodations, enjoy tropical weather, relax with massages, participate in a variety of water sports. How about Mount Kilimanjaro? I've all, everybody's heard of that now, right? The majestic mountain of Kilijam, Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Thank you. <laughs> Rising at almost 6,000 meters tall, Africa's highest peak and the world's most enormous freestanding mountain. This peak is located inside the Kilimanjaro National Park, known for its diverse biodiversity. This peak is also one of the most popular Tanzania attractions among adventurers, since it is the starting point for some of Tanzania's most challenging climbing and trekking treks. Oi, um, Ol Doyanya Langai. Okay, sorry about that. Sometimes known as the Mountain of God, an active volcano in the Gregory Rift in the Arusha area. This stratovolcano, known for its unusual lava eruption, one of Tanzania's uh, places to see with thousands of adventure seekers flocking each year to embark on a rigorous hiking route to uh, the mountain's peak. You have Lake Tanzania, okay, looking for some peace and quiet on your Tanzania vacation, visit Lake Tanganyika, one of Tanzan Tanzania's most tranquil tourist destinations. One of the ideal locations to unwind in the arms of nature with its vast stretches, quiet seashore, lush green environs. Um, here are some interesting facts about the lake that can entice you to visit. Um, it is the world's second oldest uh, freshwater lake. Again, these may be test questions, guys. World's longest freshwater lake separates Tanzania from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So large, it passes across four countries, Tanzania, Congo, Zambia, and Burundi. Burundi. You have Arusha City, enormous city of Arusha. Located at the base of Mount Maru, one of the most famous places in Tanzania, thanks to its calming, temperate environment and lively marketplaces. It is also one of the most excellent places to stay in Tanzania. Arusha is a significant destination due to its position, making it a gateway to exciting adventure destinations like Mount Kilimanjaro and Saran, Serengeti uh, National Park. And then Serengeti. you have, uh, Gura, what was that? Serengeti. Serengeti, thank you. Um, Gorongoro uh, Conservation Area, again, I, I apologize, is one of the most must-see places in Tanzania. Uh, known for its big five game, which is lion, leopard, rhinoceros, elephant, and Cape buffalo. Visit this location to see the volcanic um, Gorongoro crater, as well as vast migration of wild beasts and zebras. If you want to add a spice of excitement to your vacation to Tanzania. Okay, so cool area to see all the animals and stuff. So ways to sell to your clients. All right, other places to see. You have um, Odolde Gorge. Because of its historic and biological significance, the gorge is one of Tanzania's best places to see. Olduvide Gorge, located in the eastern Serengeti region, is an important 
paleonanthropical site with human lineage fossil deposits proven to be a crucial source of knowledge for researchers studying human evolution over the past two million years. Uh, Celis Game Reserve. The Celis Game Reserve considered one of the world's most significant um, faunal reserves, one of the must-see Tanzania um, attractions. The wildlife region covers 5,000 square kilometers home to over 350 kinds of birds and reptiles, more than 2,000 plant species, and a diverse range of animals that is a joy to observe. This location also has prepared lodges for travelers who want to spend the night in the reserve's wilderness. Mm -hmm. You have Old Fort Zanzibar. The Old Fort, located in Zanzibar's stone town, is a piece of Tanzanian, um, Tanzanian history. As its name implies, the fort is the town's oldest structure, having been constructed by Omanis to deter a Port Portuguese onslaught. It is one of the historical sites to visit in Tanzania, reflecting its rich history and serving as a popular shopping destination. Uh, Tarangir National Park, Tanzania, Tanzania, Tanzania's sixth largest um, national park located in the Manara area. However, it is not as well known as its equivalents. The Serengeti and Narangaroro are a few of the famous places to visit in Tanzania to see African creatures such as elephants, lions, and zebras. You have the National Museum of Tanzania, Tourism always also includes a visit to the National Museum of Tanzania, which takes you on a journey through the country's rich history. A trip to this museum will take you to the historic, historical co colonial era, slave trafficking history, famed Olduvai um, Old Old Gorge fossil discoveries, uh, Tanzanian tribal culture and local lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You have level eight. You want to experience Tanzania's life, nightlife, then to experience the exciting nightlife, go to level eight in Dar es Salaam, one of the most active spots to visit in the country. Level eight is a Hyatt Regency rooftop bar that serves unique drinks, delectable food, panoramic views of the port, a taste of Tanzanian um, party culture. You have the Quality Center Mall, 24-hour retail complex. Wow. One of Tanzanian's destinations as you pass through the shopping utopia includes various international standard retail establishments, restaurants, theaters for family entertainment. Treat yourself to a heartwarming shopping experience. Uh, Serengeti National Park uh, Dorns, the nation's northern half, is an essential aspect of Tanzanian uh, tourism. It is a renowned UNESCO World Heritage Site noted for its unique ecology, including extensive grasslands, diverse species attractions such as Grumeti River, Lobo Hills, uh, Balagedi, Serengeti, a vast yearly migration of 2 million wild beasts and other species such as gazelles and zebras take place here every year. And then the Pemba Island. Have you had enough animal safaris and historical tours? Spend a day on Pemba Island, surrounded by ultra marine sea waves, beautiful foliage. One of the best places to see in Tanzania to enjoy warm weather while also seeing the lush corals and abundant underwater life while participating in thrilling water sports. So you have enough for everybody there, guys. All right. Um, other things to do. Look at this. How fun a safari. All right. Do you want to experience some genuine adventure on your Tanzania trip? On the other hand, Tanzania offers a plethora of exciting outdoor activities in store for you. Apart from taking in the country's beautiful raw beauty, there are some stimulating activities to do in Tanzania. The nation provides a diverse range of ethnic African cultures. 
10 amazing things to do in Tanzania on your vacation to Tanzania, Africa. Make sure to partake in all of these engaging activities for a unique holiday experience with your friends or family. Climb Mount Kilimanjaro. On a journey to Tanzania, you may see Mount Kilimanjaro, a world famous mountain climbing to the summit, may be thrilling experience. If you're looking for adventure in Tanzania, this is the climb for you. It's a rather challenging climb, so be determined to get to the summit, the Kibo, a snow-capped crater, and the mountain's highest peak offers a breathtaking vista. Make sure you plan to get to the summit as it becomes very chilly after a while. It is one of the best things to do in Tanzania. The best trekking seasons are January to March, winter, and June to October, summer, hot season, okay? All right, hi baby, how are you? Uh, revitalize yourself in Zanzibar's blue. If you enjoy the sea and its serene blue color, Zanzibar is arguably the most excellent destination to visit in Tanzania. There are several unique things to do in Tanzania, Zanzibar, including numerous water activities. And you, if you enjoy diving, Zanzibar may be your ideal destination. Several diving destinations may be found along the Swahili coast. The water temperature is ideal for divers, ranging from 25 and 30 degrees all year. Zanzibar can provide you with spectacular beach experience. City is brimming with um, Arabic architecture and lovely streets. You can get a sense of the stone city's atmosphere. Get a glimpse of the great migration in Tanzan Tanzania. You cannot afford to miss the significant migration. If you're wondering what to do in Tanzania on a budget, this is likely the solution. The flavors of the African savanna will take your breath away. Several zebras, elan, gazelles may be seen tearing up the plains in Serengeti. Uh, these animals congregate around the river Grumeti in Tanzania's southern region from April through May. As a result, you should regard it as one of the most fun things to do in Tanzania. Don't skip the safaris. Jungle safaris are the best things to do in Tanzania. In the case of a jungle safari, you have a variety of possibilities. Another thing that will answer your query about what to do in Tanzania on a budget is this. You should go on one of the most popular jungle safari itineraries if you have time. You may get an authentic taste of an African jungle. And if you're a thrill seeker, this is the right sustenance of your, for your spirit. Massive herds of um, ungulates can be found on Serengeti safaris. These creatures that make the enormous journey called the rainforest their home. There are three separate safari routes in three different national parks. Serengeti National Park, Taranjaya National Park, Arusha National Park are the three parks. The Serengeti is a crucial option since it is designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Serengeti's forests are home to a vast number of predators. All right, yes, definitely wanna do a safari. All right, more things to do guys, take the Tanga City experience. Tanga, Tanzania's historic city. Excellent place to stay if you're unsure what to do in Tanzania. It is tranquil, consists of the German-built northern portion of the East Africa. After the scene, the Great Migration or stent strenuous walk up Mount Kili, you may relax in Tanga for a while. The Amboni Caves are among the attractions you should not miss when in Tanga. You will get the opportunity to explore the limestone stalactites and stalagmites. It's worth noting that a bit of donation to Peng, Pengen's Shrine would be appreciated. Tanga can provide you with a variety of activities to do in Tanzania while you rest. It is located just outside the Amboni Caverns entrance. Explore the magical graveyards in Tanga as they can provide you with a glimpse of the European heritage that thrives here. If you're looking for a self date, Rent a bike and ride around Tanga, a tiny harbor city. Exploring the Art Deco houses, sandy beaches might help you feel refreshed. 
This is few of the unique things to do in Tanzania. And then you have the Gora Gora um, crater, a must visit for all wildlife freaks who visit Africa. The crater is a crater formed by the ancient volcanic eruption. UNESCO has designated the crater as a world heritage site. It is home to a wide variety of animals because of the vast forest. Finding an impala or a giraffe in the, um, the Gorongoro crater might be difficult. However, if your luck is on your side, you may still be able to see them. But the African rhino is present in adequate numbers in Narangoro, which you can see. All right. Uh, for the um, get to know the Messiah people, Tanzania's Messiah tribe is one of the world's most well-known semi-nomadic tribes. One of the things to do in Tanzania is to mingle with the Messiah people. You can gain a good understanding of their way of life. The Messiah people appear to be cordial to visitors, which is beneficial to you. They are primarily found in Africa's Ser Serengeti area. And for the most realistic experience, select a decent Maasai community. Maasai warriors are the majority of the Maasai population. You'll be able to examine a wide range of jewelry made entirely of beads. A visit to the Maasai community will undoubtedly remain etched in your mind for the rest of your life. And then peek from the vantage point of the hot air balloon. When visiting Tanzania, a hot air balloon ride should always be considered. This is once again, one of Tanzania's fun things to do. The view from the top of the hot air balloon may be very relaxing. From the top, you may simply snap a panoramic, um, snap a panoramic. The majority of these travel take place in the early morning. All right, um, places to eat. Okay, you guys hungry? Let's check this out. Um, Tanzania is famous for its vibrant wildlife and abundant aquatic life, ranging from immense wilderness to lush green islands and from the big five game to beautiful corals. The, um, did you mean? No. Okay. Um, the tropical resort of Zanzibar is home to various islands and magnificent landmarks and some of Tanzania's most exhilarating adventure sports and enticing. Okay, go out. Side? Destination um, to explore. Sorry, my dog's here with me. Can you hear him crying? The country's multiculturalism ensures that visitors from all over the world feel at ease. Drinking is not prohibited here, and there are several beef cafes and restaurants where you may have a few drinks while having a plunge in the sea. Samaki Samaki lovely outlet has the funkiest of music mixed with fantastic food and an overall joyful ambiance, making it one of Tanzania's top restaurants. This is your chance for an evening out with pals because it is located inside a mall. There aren't many restaurants in the heart of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, but this one more than makes up for it. The restaurant is decorated in an electric, electric jungle motif serves mostly seafood. This location attracts a mix of residents and vis visitors, and the service is excellent. Lus Lustania, known among residents and visitors for its economic and, um, economical and fantastic seafood, is the most significant destination to get some tasty seafood in the Zanzibar area. Lustania, includes plates full of prawns, crabs, oysters, octopus, and fish, among other things. There are three distinct types of menus for three different pricing ranges with a large selection. When you add in the tranquil setting close to the ocean, you have a culinary paradise on your hands. The chapati provided here tastes like Indian bread and melts in your tongue. This is one of the best restaurants in Tanzania. Okay, so keep that in mind. Chow Patty, Tan Tanzania has a large Indian migrant community. Finding an Indian restaurant is not difficult. Nevertheless, preferences differ and you may not enjoy all the eateries that serve Indian food. Chow Patty lives up to its name by serving up some of the greatest Indian shot, shot in the country. 
You may get traditional cholo bhatura or butter naan with curries. Their vegetarian fare is particularly popular with Indian customers. Chow Patty should be your one-stop shop for all of Dar es Salaam's delicious Indian food. And then Karamesi uh, Cafe, lovely facade, uh, which is part of a hotel, looks out over the sea. Views in Tanzan Tanzania don't get much better than this. You may spend your evenings here with the warm sea air, great meals because it is constructed on top of a cliff, thus the name Sea Cliff Hotel. Enjoy your evening with beverages and company by ordering a seafood platter, a great pizza, or just coffee. This is where you can meet up with your friends after a long day. The outdoor seating along with the beautiful view of the horizon, delectable food, and enticing beverages ensures that this establishment is included in every list of most excellent restaurants in Tanzania. And then the Badalina uh, Secret Garden uh, Restaurant. Don't be deceived by the shack life facade, for this is a truly hidden gem in so many ways. The cuisine is fantastic. You won't find any fresher salads any place else in the city. The hummus, as well as the Middle Eastern meal preparation, is everything you need to feel like you're on vacation. We wouldn't be shocked if you ate here every day for the remainder of your holiday. It happens to a lot of people. The great ambiance, salty air from the sea, and the great patronage ensure that your stay is well worth it and also one of the best restaurants in Tanzania. All right, more places to eat, and we're almost done, guys. Milan's restaurant, the eatery, um, the eatery, another addition to this list of fantastic Tanzania's places to eat, is a godsend for budget visitors. Think delicious roti uh, wraps, sabzis, everything else made with fresh African ingredients. Furthermore, the establishment is entirely vegetarian, making it a haven for those unable to consume meat. They also have fresh juices, so you don't uh, forget to take advantage of that. You're signing up for finger-licking meals without burning a hole in your pocket at this location. Indo Italiano. Don't be fooled by the moniker. Um, this isn't a fusion restaurant at all. It delivers delicious Italian, Indian, and Italian cuisine individually, avoiding the culinary crime of combining the two. This is the only eatery in Moshi where you can get the greatest naan and dal and delicious meatball spaghetti. Restaurants in Tanzania um, don't get much better than this. They offered a variety of Indian style chicken dishes, including chicken tikka, butter chicken, coconut chicken, lemon chicken, and steaks and burgers. Tapan Bog, cheapest and best Indian restaurant in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Chapon Bog is where you take your family for an evening of fun and frolic. Known for its dosas, talas, kachoras, galgapas, and other traditional Indian delicacies. There are many um, munchies to pick from, and the flavor will always win you over. Consider chai, lassi, mithai, namkeen, and other beverages. Take it from their Indian customers. Food doesn't get much better. You have the Grill House, uh, one of the top romantic restaurants in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, Tanzania, is the ideal steakhouse. Wide selection of wines to pair with your meat, live music is provided. Their saxophonist, saxophonist, whatever, um, can help you create the perfect atmosphere for your romantic occasion with a delicious menu ranging from beef ribs to calamari to fish and chips. This is the ideal spot for a memorable date without breaking the bank. Akimi, uh, known as a city spinning restaurant, another lovely site to take your lover. So if that's your cup of tea, stop by and say hello. The best place to obtain a bird's eye perspective of Dar es Salaam is on top of Akimi. You'll discover a wide variety of European, Asian, and local foods to satisfy your hunger. Their beverages and cocktails are exquisite and the restaurant's environment as well as the kind of personnel will add to the beauty of your evening. Then you have the 
em Emerson Spice Rooftop Tea House. Magnificent restaurant serves you a combination made in heaven by combining a gourmet rainbow of flavors and spices with Zanzibari cooking and the most delicate fish. If you want to wow your significant other, go to Emerson Spice, where the seductive ambiance rooftop views are almost as unique as the food. And if you're planning a wedding, guys, this may be a nice place for them to go and have a nice romantic dinner, right? Two restaurants are housed in the unusual, wonderfully renovated ancient merchants building, each of which will spice up your evening. This is one of the best places to eat in Tanzania. Tanzania. All right, and then street food. Um, food markets, meat lovers may spend hours in gourmet nirvana. Niyama Choma, which loosely translates to grilled beef. One of the most famous street dishes. It's made by roasting freshly cut pork cubes on a grid over hot coals for several hours. These juicy char grilled pork skewers are frequently served with umbalian and various other side dishes. It's important to know that the meat isn't usually fish or chicken. It might be goat. All right. And last places to stay. Okay, and then we have our quiz, guys. All right, so you have Greystoke Mahali, a secluded tented camp in West Tanzania's Mahal Mountains, home to chimps. The world's most enormous known population of chimps may be found in this location. Camp is located on a lonely beach along the shores of Lake Tanganyika at the base of the highly wooded Mahail Mountains National Park. The lake, home to 250 kinds of tropical fish, is ideal for snorkeling, fishing, and kayaking. Trek through Mahal's jungle to see the endangered chimps, as well as leopard, bushbook, um, bushbuck, bush pig, and a variety of kids and butter bird <laughs> kids, birds and butterflies. This is one of the coolest uh, places to stay in Tanzania. All right, how fun. Swala Camp, nestled in the secluded corner of Tangara National Park, near the border of the Rusi marshes and overlooking the rolling savanna beyond. Beneath the canopy of enormous uh, um, acacia trees, elephants may almost always be seen in and around Swala. The lodge appears to be a hangout for a bachelor herd of mammals or males and females pass through and give birth nearby on occasion. At Swala, an incredible 92 elephant bulls have been recorded. Wow. Swala provides an exclusive wildlife watching, wilderness luxury, and real untamed piece of Africa as an extraordinary <laughs> secluded safari retreat and no other camps around, making it one of the best places to stay in Tanzania. And then Chada Katavi, beautiful tented camp located amid Tanzania's Katavi National Park, setting of seasonal rivers, open grasslands and woods. At the same time, canopy of acacias, kikalias um, and tamarinds provides a shade okay. and food for wildlife, Oops, hold on, sorry guys. Mute, okay. For wildlife, um, to, to, to the resort is excellent position for panoramic views of the Chada Plain from its high vantage point. Uh, explore the region on a guided walking safari or go on exhilarating uh, wildlife drives in open air cars. Go fly camping beneath the stars for authentic safari experience or observe it all, absorb it all from the comfort of your tent veranda. All right, last one. Baraza Resort. Ooh, look how beautiful that is, guys. Take those pictures and share them with your certificate. Baraza Resort and Spa, beautiful Baraza Resort and Spa located on Beju Beach, Southeast Zanzibar, which was recently named one of the Condé Nast top 30 island beaches globally, and is also one of the best places to stay in Tanzania. The resort's uninterrupted length of palm trees, silky white sand serves as the ideal backdrop for diving into the local 
coral reefs or exploring other must-see regions of Zanzibar, including Stonetown and Ghazani Forest. Ubuntu, Ubuntu Migration Camp. During the year Great Migration, our authentic semi-permanent safari camp is strategically located to intercept the natural movement of animals through Tanzania's Serengeti habitat, ensuring excellent views of one of nature's greatest spectacles. And then Ubuntu camp is small traditional camp with raw wilderness ambiance that skillfully combines safari authenticity, authenticity with visitor comfort. Ubuntu camp is positioned in the Western corridor between Naira Koromo, the hills and the Serengeti's boundary from May to July to catch wild beasts crossing the ranging Rometi River. Uh, it migrates to the Northern Serengeti from J July to October, suitable for crossing the Mara River. The thundering herds had reached the Nagarongoro Conser Conservan Conservancy area where the camp is once again erected by December to March. Okay, focus of the camp is on receiving the most realistic experience of the great migration possible. With only eight tents equipped with safari staples like fire heated duck showers and gum boots for when the rains turn the land into fertile muck, okay? And then Kiwali Camp, a private mobile camp in the Rurua National Park, isolated. Camp's location alternates between two sites, ensuring that it is constantly in a natural environment. This allows you to see Africa in the most natural state while having access to all the amenities of a luxury hotel and is also on the list of the coolest places to stay in Tanzania. The best time to visit to see generally wild Africa on incredible uh, game drives in pursuit of unique animals and fauna from June to March, okay? Best time, June to March. Experienced guides are happy to show you the park's outstanding features, including breathtaking unspoiled landscape. The park offers various game watching opportunities, including enormous lion, cheetah, and leopard pride. All right, everybody ready? Take the quiz and get your certificate. Let's go, guys. If it pulls up. All right, there we go. All right, you guys ready? Well, it looks like only five or six questions. Ready. Okay. Oil uh, doing ya. Hold on. Hey there, I'm on a training. I'll call you right back. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Uh, popular known as Oil Doña Lengue. Mountain of God. Mountain of God. Which city is located at the base of Mount Meru? Are you on the same one as I? Uh, yeah, the, the questions are out of order. Just, read, just look down for your question and answer it there. So the, the oil doña should be down below. If not, then let me know and I'll, I'll help you. All right, Arusha. Arusha, yeah. When should one visit to witness the migration? January to March. January to March. Okay, so we've got June. Okay, so migration, oh. June. Oh. Climb the Mount no, 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 no. Is January to March. Okay, so to climb the Mount um, Kilimanjaro, January to, January to March. The one before it is April. It is April? Yes, April through, it starts in April and goes through May. The migration? Yeah. Okay. Which of the I'm following is, is Africa's highest peak? Isn't that Kilimanjaro? No, Kilimanjaro. All right, mm -hmm. so, so what everybody. Was, uh, what was, no, what was the one that said, which is the best time to climb um, Mount? January to March. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And witness the migration. They said April. 
Arusha is at the base of Mount Muru. And then Mountain of God. You guys get it? Oh. Nope. Let's, let's yeah. see. Wait a minute. One minute. The okay. no worries. Let's let's make sure. You said which city is the base of Mount Maru? Arushu. Aru, okay. Yeah. Arushu. And the okay. Great Migration uh, visitation is in June, right? Uh yes. Okay. Wait a minute. Um, Wait a minute. Yeah. When should you visit the witnesses of the migration? That's April, right? Yeah. For June. April. April. Huh? Which one? I just put all the answers in the chat, you guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Forgive me on the spelling for the last one. I couldn't see it, so I just put it the best way I could spell it. Thank you. All right. So everybody good? Let's go and check our answers. Ding, 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 ding. Did we pass? Did we pass? We passed. We got four out of five. So we missed one. Oh, we got, which one I got we three out of five. You got five out of five? No, I got three out of five. Okay. So go by. Okay. Here's your certificate, guys. Make sure you download your certificate. So you three out of five, go back and fix whichever ones um, so you can pass, because I don't know if that passes or not. Um, where do you click for the certificate? Right here. It says, I don't know it, says, it says congratulations. Right. Mm -hmm. You either view or download. Okay. Ooh, I don't like that four out of five, but okay. <laughs> Nobody like knows. That. You pass. Like that. That. <laughs> Nobody knows how I said right? <laughs> All right, everybody pass. Make sure I want everybody to get their certificate. I want you to download your certificate. I want to see it posted on social media. Share some of the best places to see the safari information those pictures and stuff. Remember up here at the top, you could have saved it under your itinerary so you can go back and view those, okay? Did you guys learn anything? Did you enjoy it? Anybody yeah. ready to go yeah. to Africa? I've had so many clients asking about um, Tanzania, um, specifically Zanzibar. So I had to get on this training today. So thank you. Perfect. All right. And that's that's what it's about. And it's also fun because, again, some people may have already been there, can share ideas. Some people may have lived there. So it, it, it is a, a great thing to get on these. And, and, you know, let's just have some fun, you know. Um, again, I'm an agent just like you guys. I just volunteer to do these so we can help each other. And, uh, and again, now, you know, you may be invited for events or fam trips to Tanzania. We can maybe do a group trip, you know. So let's just keep having fun, keep training, keep sharing the information. I tell people post, post, post every day. You know, let them know you're a travel agent. Don't let them forget, you know. So um, again, uh, Friday, we're doing um, Qatar. I think that's a Mexico uh, resort or place, um, a destination, yeah. Um, and then on Saturday, Charisma, a hotel. Now, you know, we did Marriott with Marriott, guys. Now we get fantastic rates with Marriott. I went to Miami and got, uh, my flight was canceled and I got a, a suite regularly 175 a night. I got it for $71. So, you know, we get amazing perks. So, you know, the more you learn, the more you get involved with these different vendors and, and destinations, you get so much material and marketing and stuff. So, you know, that's what I just say, just stay plugged in, let's help each other. Um, attend these trainings, attend as many as you want whenever. I also tell everybody, get on as many Q and A's that you can. Learn from all the different leaders, um, see what's out there. Um, you know, we just posted one about, uh, Emily did one on um, Delta tr Travel. They have amazing, amazing opportunities um, for us travel agents of booking packages and stuff. You may have thought of Delta is just an airline. No, they do actual 
full-fledged, you know, um, carrier bookings and stuff, hotels and everything, packages. So again, here's a list of all the trainings that we have done. Um, and then the, my YouTube channel is right here. And then over here, again, guys, go in and pre-register for a lot of these. So when we get in, you'll already be in the system, okay? And again, up here at the top of this spreadsheet that I shared earlier um, are where a lot of those links are right here. So the Travel Agent Academy, OTP, uh-huh. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, this, this Excel sheet that you're showing, right. where do I locate this at? This is, I'll share it right here, but it's in the incentive voucher group that I told everybody to try to be in because that's where I post everything because that's where like the entire company comes to. Um, you know, each team kind of has their own trainings and stuff, but my stuff is open to everybody. So I, I post it here for everybody to see. Um, so Sandy actually keeps this up to date for me, Sandy Gunderson, she's amazing. So it's under um, right here, she lists the, the trainings and then she lists that spreadsheet, it's under featured. And so I posted it here in the chat, but if you go down here under featured, it's right here, um, January 21st. And then you just- Oh, click. I don't think I'm in this incentive vouchers only group. Yeah, I, I, I must put, have missed it. It's on Facebook, right? Yeah, I put it in the chat earlier to make sure you guys sign up for it. I'll do it again now. Um, you have to make sure you answer the questions because if you don't answer the questions, you'll be denied. Uh, it, two of the questions that are on there are in the sign up part. So when you say what's number four and five, just keep looking at that sign up thing and, and the answers will be there for you. Okay, Marnie, perfect. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for your help. Hey, I have a quick question regarding the incentive vouchers group uh -huh. i signed up and i paid the 12 dollars and i sent the uh screenshot of my payment how okay. do i access the vouchers okay so here you're in the incentive voucher group mm -hmm. and, and i'm going to be doing a training on this next thursday but if you want to watch my training if you go here to guides okay mm -hmm. It'll have all the forms, how to how to pay, how to terms and conditions of each voucher, the training video, filling out the form, filling out the um, the, the payment, and then a, a process walkthrough voucher. So all these trainings are right here. You can how to fill out and order a voucher. Okay. So you click here and you want to order a, a cruise one. Like I was saying, the, the one lady ordered a cruise one and and they were calling and, and calling uh, Norwegian asking them about this voucher. And they're like, what are you talking about? You know, um, these vouchers, again, are based on availability. They're kind of like a Groupon or Priceline. Um, they're based on, um, we get them because these companies want to fill their space, okay? So when your customer wants a specific, thank you guys again, you know, this is over. You guys can leave if you want. Um, but if they want a specific trip, guys, they need to go through you as a travel agent. Okay. These are just what we do as we say, you know, like my page. Or if you booked with me, thank you so much here. I'm going to give you another cruise voucher that you can use at a later date. Um, what we always tell people is it's based on availability. There are taxes and fees that apply, but also that, um, you know, what we say is there to fill the additional cabins or the additional hotel rooms, because then these companies feel that, okay, they were already going to be empty anyway, but if I give Grisel this hotel room, she's going to spend money in my spa, in my restaurants, in my stores. So that's how they get their money, right? So gotcha. you, you as the agent now, you're going to offer this to a client, or I use a lot about the um, farmer's market, you know, drop their business card in to win a seven night resort stay. When you get home, now you have a hundred leads. 50 of them want to know about how do I make money in travel? If you want to know about um, a trip, they want to take to Disney World or Hawaii. And you now have 100 leads. And then you call each one, though, because these vouchers are unlimited. 
you're going to tell every single person they won. And again, what you're going to say is, <laughs> yeah, you have to go through the company. So like I said, if you go up to terms and conditions, you know, one of the companies, you know, you, you do it online. One of them, you get a call and talk to an agent. One of them, you have to mail in. So before you order these vouchers, read the terms and conditions. Are they transferable? Um, are they only for adults? Do they have to be 18? Okay. The gotcha. way you say is you have 30 days to redeem this voucher and then you have two years to use it. So then what you're going to do is 25 days in, you're going to call up and say, you know, uh, who's this? Um, Angela. Hey, Angela, it's Marnie. I just wanted to follow up and see if you redeem your seven night resort voucher. Uh, you only have five days left. Oh, no, I don't. I'll do it right now. Okay, great. Once you redeem that and do your booking with that agent, come back to me and then I can help you with the incidentals, the airfare, the car rental, the, the excursions, okay? Right. You can't help them with the actual booking themselves, but then if they don't upsell them, that's when you come in and help them after, okay? Great. So okay. that'll, that'll be on, that'll be on my training again. And again, you can watch the training, but you just go here. You ordered the voucher. Voucher <sighs> has to be made out to the person that's getting it. So again, if you're doing it at a farmer's market, you're going to tell, or you, you're, you have a, a winner today. Okay. And uh, you need it right away. Okay. So you fill it out. Sandy issues these every day, 24 hours. So you just tell okay. them I'll have this to you within 24 hours. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, all right. Thank you. Real quick. Oh. Okay. Um, when we go back, say some of the things um, and the destination, the restaurants and things that are in the Tanzania, uh, do, can we go back to that and yes. refresh our memories on what it has to offer? Yep. Remember, I showed you at the beginning. If you if you missed it, um, when you go into the train. Okay, when you go into the training, up here at the top, um, let's go back into the training. You see my screen? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Up at the very top, okay. you can save the itinerary with the pictures and everything. And then when you go to your link up here, see right here, add to itinerary, add this slide or add yeah. all slides. Okay. I think I did so. <laughs> yeah, and then up okay. here, so you can go back and do it now. And then you go back up, so I'm gonna say, okay. And then you go back up here and you go to my itinerary and then they'll all be right there. Okay, thank you. So right here, download, oh. download or share. So you can share it, you can download it. So we've got Egypt, Argentina, and then I guess I just deleted my Tanzania. Tanzania. Uh oh, <laughs> sorry. I can add it again. Not all right, so you guys got it? Everybody um, good? No. You know what? My, my certificate don't have my name or nothing on it. Okay, what you need to probably do is go back up to your profile and correct that then. So go up to your but profile. My profile. Yeah, but my profile stuff, it has my information there. All right, yeah, I don't Ooh. know. It should have it otherwise right here. Maybe edit profile name. Maybe just go in and delete it and edit it, and maybe it'll pop up now. Yeah, it's in there. And so we have to, okay, so it's asking, so we have to put in all this here, other stuff, the skills and all that stuff. Um, I, have, me to, I mean, you can, you can, or, you know, to do it or whatever. Yeah. If you want to update it, I, I have it, but yeah, you can to get everything updated. Um, But it seemed like it won't let me. Because I don't have mine filled out and it still let me download my certificate. Maybe I didn't maybe I didn't register the right way or something. Yeah. So I would just go, like I said, right up here to your profile, go to your account or your profile and just re-update mm -hmm. it. Like here you can edit or you can edit your profile name. I would do both those. And then right. it'll be updated. <sighs> But thank you very much. Well, 
course. They're, they're fun. They're, you know, hopefully we'll see you guys on Friday and Saturday for the other two. And again, I have recorded this, so I will have it on my, my YouTube channel and then we'll have it in that link also. All right. The quick question. Okay. On, uh, one of the other, uh, classes that you've done, I completed them, but yet uh, when I go to try to do my certificate, it says it's not complete. All right, I would go through and, and see which one's not complete. Like, you know, we, we completed like the uh, canard one time and there was a problem. It kept not recognizing one of the tests that we took. So I would just go- Well, it done that. <laughs> they yeah. fixed that. <laughs> okay, yeah, so what I would do is just go to the beginning and just arrow through everything and make sure, you know, like, like Disney, Disney always does updates. So I know I completed it, but now when I go into it, it says it's not completed because they've done an update. So I right. would just go back into whatever, you know, training it was and then arrow through all the things. Because a lot of times you have to maybe open up the picture to be able to have it accept that you've completed it. So you may have missed like a that, video. That, that's, 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 that's what it was saying. Uh, it's saying uh, I don't have a photo to, uh, what you call it? Uh, it don't recognize a photo or something. Yeah, so I would go through, and again, on these different ones, if for any reason you went through everything, you checked everything, they usually have a, uh, a contact us or something where you can go in and and send them a message and then they they're usually good so right here about us or contact us and say hey my name's not showing up on my certificate can you help me okay well it's not, it's not even that part it's just saying see i'll read it to you let me see you who's it on what's it on what 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 program uh, it's a virgin uh voyage okay virgin voyages yeah. okay so are you waiting it's on a, a certificate? They say no certificate image was selected for this course. Okay, just so you know, on Virgin Voyages, even if you've completed it, their certificates are only issued once a month. So if you've completed your silver and your gold and you're waiting for your certificate, it'll be issued within that month. And you'll probably get them both the same day if you've completed them the same day. But you don't get your hmm. your certificate the same time you finish it. You complete uh, it, and then they'll email it to you within a few weeks. That's because yeah, I know when I I know when I look at the uh, course analysis, it's telling me even though I got eighty three percent, it's showing. Hmm, oh, now it's showing something totally different. <laughs> oh, the word I showing know. 50 percent on some of them. Yeah, as long as again, as long as you've completed, it says you've completed your silver, you know, or whatever the the thing is. Um, I don't have it listed here, but uh, um, then then you'll get your certificate within that month. They only oh. process them like once a month for everybody. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Know. Mine's not working right neither. So yeah, maybe get out of it completely and then go back into it and um and just update your you know your name and stuff and then get back out and then try it again. And then if not, I would send a message to them and just say, Hey, you know, I've been trying, I completed the training, but it's not printing my name or something. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So congratulations. And I hope you have an amazing day. And um, I will be back on at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific on a uh, Q&A. If anybody just wants to jump on and go over anything, I'll be on for about an hour just answering questions. So if you want to come back, we'll be on the same uh, Zoom number. So, All right. Well, yeah, we Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.